Good evening to Minority Floor Leader Jeff Hoover. It's, Good evening, Renee. It's great to have you with us. I know Thank it's you. a busy time for you. Uh, today perhaps didn't turn out like you had anticipated. <laughs> uh, when we started this session, I know right. there was a promise that you know there was going to be big announcements and that there were things were going to shift. And I know that this doesn't set as well with you. This turnout today, we think three out of four uh, will be in Democratic hands. So yeah. your your impressions at this point? Well, I mean. We are disappointed. We actually had wanted to take two steps forward, and I think we took one step forward today rather than two, so that is disappointing. But we have always focused on November. I mean, our candidate recruitment last year up until the filing deadline this year was all about November, and then, lo and behold, we have special elections thrown in there with Ryan Quarles and Mike Harmon winning constitutional offices and then the two that, members that resigned. So that was unexpected, quite honestly. So uh, we're still focused on November. We are a little disappointed. We wanted to win two seats today. We came up uh, short in doing that, but our guys are focused on moving forward to November. And the, and the thing is, we now have more members than we've had since 1921. We have more members than we had last year. The Democrats have still fewer members than they have last year. So that's all positive and we're focused on November. But real, we really want to focus the next three weeks on getting a budget done. Absolutely. And now that these elections are behind us, we want to get a budget done and then we'll focus on November. Do you or have you thought about what could have been the loose ends that caused things not to work out in your favor during these special elections? No, we feel really, really good about our effort. I, I mean, we had folks involved uh, financially. We had folks involved on the ground. We had consultants involved that have never been involved before. We raised more money than we've ever raised before for special elections. Uh, we spent on average about $150,000 per seat. Uh, that's caucus money, party money, and candidate money. Uh, that's unprecedented for us to do that in a special election. Uh, we had good consultants. We felt really good about the effort that we put forth. What's important to remember, Renee, that in the four districts, three of them heavily favored Democrats by registration. The one did not, that was the Casey and Bull County seat, and we won that seat. Daniel Elliott did a tremendous job there and won that election. That was the only one out of the four that uh, was favored Republican by party registration. And you go back and look, uh, in special elections, generally party registration has a much bigger effect than say it does in a general election. So um, yeah, we're disappointed because we wanted to win at least two. But we won one, our goal is still November. That's for all the marbles, if you will, on who's gonna be in control next January. Uh, that's still our focus and, and we're ready to move, to move forward on that. And I will say, I, I do think uh, President Obama's phone call today, uh, the robo call for the Democrat candidate in the Hopkinsville, Christian County area. This is the eighth house district. That's right, district eight. Uh, particularly in that call was focused in very selected precincts, high minority voting population precincts, and it had an effect. Uh, Which so, is unusual for a Democrat to have any kind of influence in the western part of the state these days, but you but can say it targeted minority It targeted population. minority uh, heavily districts in Hopkinsville and Christian County, and in special elections, people tend to vote party registration anyway, and I think the president's phone call there uh, according to all the reports that we got in those minority heavy districts, uh, the vote, uh, the turnout was tremendous, obviously in favor of the Democrat candidate. Uh, it's interesting uh, because I wonder how many of those Democrat candidates uh, will run away from the president come November. Uh, they took him for an advantage today to mm -hmm. help them today, but what will they do in November? So. It's an interesting uh, uh, situation there, and we'll see how it plays out. Mm -hmm, certainly. And so now, as you say, we'll talk about the budget a little bit. That's the task before you. Right. Uh, it, was, it was important to have uh, 51, because 51 is what you need to pass a budget. And, right. and the Democrats uh, have that, and certainly uh, probably would get more votes as the process moves, because yeah. we know that where the budget is now is not where we'll end up on day on day 60. Right. So the strategy for Republicans now, the Democrats may feel like, you know, the wind is at their back, that they are, this is a resurgence that shows that there's some momentum that is shifting in their direction. Do you feel that way, that you, that you think that perhaps this is a harbinger of what could happen in November? 
No, I do not, because uh, the Democrats won three seats today that are pr predominantly Democrat districts. Uh, so I do not think that. Uh, I believe the people of Kentucky understand the financial situation that this state is in. Governor Bevin has done a good job of laying that out there, and he was very active in our campaigns. Uh, but I do think the people understand the financial situation that we're in. And the important thing is today is day 42, I think, mm -hmm. as you know. So we've 43. got 43. So we've got 17 days left, and the House still hasn't passed a budget, still hasn't presented a budget. And they would budget. say that's not unusual. Well, but it is unusual because the earliest we're going to do it probably now is next Tuesday the 15th or Wednesday the 16th which will be like day 48. That leaves only really 10 working days for the Senate because you got two veto days. So it is unusual to wait this late in the game uh, to present a budget. And you know what they were doing was waiting for the elections today uh, so that they could push through because otherwise uh, they didn't have 51 votes. Now they do, so let's move the process forward. I told the speaker earlier today, we want to work in a bipartisan manner regardless of the outcomes tonight because we have to get a budget. We've got serious financial issues in this state that have to be addressed, and we're prepared to do that over the next three weeks. Then we'll focus on November.